Snastruck. With the Plug and Play NES Classic Edition coming out tomorrow, and by the way, I've posted a video on all the games on that device several weeks back, I've had a few people ask me about what a Super Nintendo Classic might look like if it were ever to be made. Well, first thing you have to do is draw a line between what games should be on there and what inevitably will be on there. Just take a look at the NES Classic. That device was made with an emphasis on simple pick up and play style games, like Balloon Fight and Mario Brothers, and Ice Climber, and two different Donkey Kong games. So, as tempting as it would be to make any potential SNES classic edition and RPG machine, it in all likelihood would include stuff like Wario's Woods, Kirby's Avalanche, Yoshi's Cookie, those kinds of games, so keep that in mind. Eh, but you know what? What fun is it to do a realistic depiction of a Super Nintendo classic? Here's the 30 games that I think should be on there. And bear in mind, I'm going for balance here. I want as many games and genres represented as possible. Of course, you gotta start with the best game on the system, Chrono Trigger. I mean, this game was the impetus of why I started this channel, to tell a younger generation of gamers how freaking good this game is. So if there's a chance to make this game widely available for anyone to play, then it's gotta be included. Chrono Trigger effortlessly tells a brilliantly laid out story with a rock solid combat system, a beautiful soundtrack, and hey, an RPG with no random battles. It's just the best. Anyway, Mario World, Link to the Past, Super Metroid, Yoshi's Island, Donkey Kong Country 1 and 2, these games are all in the goes without saying category. These games are a sure thing to be on there, so some guy on the internet does not need to waste your time talking about them even more than I already have on previous videos. I will say, I do think Donkey Kong Country 3 is better than the first game, but the first game is ridiculously popular, and you'd be crazy to leave it off. I'd rather leave off the third game to make room for something else. You could also probably throw Kirby Superstar into this group as well, since it's the most prominent Kirby game here, and he's since become one of Nintendo's many go-to franchises. One first party title that's a little tougher to decide on is Star Fox. This game hasn't aged that well, mostly because of the frame rate, and I mean, it just looks very 90s. But hey, isn't that the point of stuff like the SNES Classic Edition to go back and experience stuff like this again? I say Star Fox should be on here, warts and all. It can't be overstated how freaking cool this game was at the time, even if it doesn't hold up quite as well today. Mega Man X and X2 have to be on here, of course, but I'll pass on X3. That game is still pretty good since it's Mega Man. I mean, it's pretty tough to make a bad Mega Man game back then, but it definitely falls flat compared to the first two games. But yeah, X and X2 have to be included since they're two of the best action platformers of the 16-bit era. A brilliant balance of speed, movement, enemy design, and level layout. Sticking with action platformers, there's Super Castlevania 4. This game isn't as fast or as chaotic as stuff like Mega Man, but it introduces atmosphere and mood into the mix. There's not another game like this on the Super Nintendo. Two other Konami platformers that have to be considered are Contra 3 and Legend of the Mystical Ninja, and again, it's because there's just nothing else like them on the Super Nintendo. Contra 3 is easily the best run and gun style game on the system, and Legend of the Mystical Ninja has a little bit of everything, exploration, humor, two player co-op, and a distinct art style. You gotta have sports games on here, so I gotta mention the four I always do. NBA Jam, NHL 96, Tecmo Super Bowl, and Ken Griffey Jr. presents Major League Baseball. All four of these are such easy, accessible, pick-up-and-play games that are so much fun. It doesn't even matter if you don't even like sports, you'll still have fun with them. In the racing category, personally I'd go with Top Gear, a great arcade-style racing game that conveys an exhilarating sense of speed. But F-Zero is more popular, so I understand if you want to go with that instead. There's gotta be shoot 'em ups on here as well. Personally, I think it should be Space Megaforce or Super Aleste. This game represents the best of what shoot 'em up gameplay can do. It's perfectly balanced speed, pacing, and space, and lots of chaotic action without being too overwhelming for newcomers to the genre. For puzzle games, like I said, there's probably going to be a bunch of these on here, but the best of the bunch is Tetris Attack. It doesn't have much to do with Tetris or attacking, but it's still the most polished and addictive puzzle game out there. For beat-em-ups, you really only need one game, Turtles in Time. This game is considered the best beat-em-up for its time because it not only gets all the basic stuff right, like visuals, sound, hit detection, and special moves like hurling a guy into the screen, but the game is just so crazy that you just want to keep playing it to see where in time you end up next, or what weapons you get to use, or what weird boss you'll have to fight. And of course, playing with the second player makes it all that much better. Speaking of multiplayer, I've mentioned plenty of co-op games, but there's also versus multiplayer games like Super Mario Kart. Yeah, this one kind of goes without saying, it'll be on there. And of course, there's one-on-one -on -one fighting games, and for that you gotta go with Street Fighter 2 Turbo and Killer Instinct. I like the idea of pairing these two together because Street Fighter is a little easier, while Killer Instinct takes more practice to get those combos down, so you can start out with one game and move on to the next game as you get better. 
last we get to the role-playing games, and these games are largely what the Super Nintendo was known for. So, like I said earlier, it's tempting to throw down like 10 or 12 of these games that are like 30 hours long, but that wouldn't make for a very balanced palette of games. I've already mentioned Chrono Trigger, and yeah, Final Fantasy VI has to be on here too. The sheer depth and detail of that game, both in the combat system and the story, will keep you busy for hours. You know Mario RPG is going to make the cut, and rightfully so. That's a laugh-out-loud funny and enjoyable game that takes kind of a different approach to the genre. And for the action RPG category, there's Secret of Mana and Terra Enigma. Those two have to be included, at least for their soundtracks. They are incredible. Secret of Mana overall just has a great look and sound to it, and it's so satisfying to squash enemies with your overpowered weapons. Terra Enigma has a story that you'll remember long after finishing, and besides, that game was PAL exclusive, the rest of the world needs to see it, just like how the PAL region needs to see all these games that they missed out on. So that's about it. Oh wait, did I forget something? Ah uh, yes, of course, Pit Fighter! What a remarkable masterstroke of artistic genius this game is, a lurid and beautiful... What? What's the problem? Oh, alright. The game I save for the end is, of course, Earthbound. I admit, maybe this game isn't for everyone, but everyone should at least try it to see if it's up their alley. Every single aspect of this game is unpredictable and keeps you on your toes expecting anything, and it has a surprisingly sweet story with one of the best endings to any game ever. So that's it. Now comes your favorite part of the video, to leave a comment telling me what I forgot. Hey, go ahead. What do you think should be on here? Anyway, thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.